Hello and welcome to another video in this series as we journey from the very simple primes to the foothills of the very famous Riemann hypothesis. Today's a very short video just answering a very simple question um, which uh, somebody got in touch about asking whether the Riemann zeta function is symmetric above and below the real axis or not. So we'll look at that because the picture suggested it was. So we're just going to dive into that a little bit. It should only be a very short five minute video. So when we plotted the Riemann zeta function previously, um, obviously for initially for sigma more than one and then we extended it to sigma more than zero, above and below the axis it looked symmetric. Um, and when we looked at the 3D views, it also um, looked symmetric as well. Um, and the question naturally is, is it symmetric? Is it the same above and below the, the real axis? Because it looks like it is. But what we have to remember is that what we've plotted in this 2D view and those 3D views as well is actually the magnitude of a complex function. By plotting just the magnitude, we lose some information. And what we lose is information about the imaginary, um, about the phase. So let's, let's draw a picture to show what that means. If I've got um, a complex um, number here, let's say two plus or three plus two i, and another one here, which is three minus two i, the, the phase is uh, opposite here. So the imaginary part is inverted. So if that is S, the complex number, and this is S, this is actually the complex conjugate, it's reflected. If we plotted the magnitude these would be the same. So if that was S1 and this is S2, so S1, if we did the magnitude, it would be the same magnitude as S2 because the magnitude is only the distance from the origin to that point, and that would be the same. Um, so by plotting just the magnitude, by only looking at the magnitude, we lose information about the, the phase or the, the angle the complex number makes with the real axis. Phase is often not used in mathematics, it tends to be used in engineering physics. Um, the word argument, the argument of a complex number is what's used in mathematics, but I use phase by, by habit. So let's explore that a little bit to see if that is the case, that, that perhaps um, it looks the same even though the phase might be opposite. So we start by looking at the, we remind ourselves the complex conjugate of a complex number is a reflection of a, of that number in the real axis, and we've just seen that. So the three plus two i, the complex conjugate of that is where the imaginary part has its sign flipped. So three plus two i, three minus two i, we've just drawn that picture. So if we look at that series, the Riemann zeta function, this series, initially we'll look at this simple version, which is valid for sigma more than one. So the Riemann zeta function is the sum of one over n to the s. So each term is n, one over n to the s. If we look at the conjugate of s, so we feed not s but the conjugate of s into the function, what we can see is if we rewrite n to the minus s bar with the um, base e because it's easier, we can see that because e to the complex e to the complex number is is um, it's easy to visualize. We can see that this s bar can be extended to the whole thing. Let's let's see what that is. So if I have e to the i phi bar. So if I draw that as phi and then e to this 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 complex number is e to the i minus phi and this one here is e to the i phi if i take the complex conjugate of that that equals e to the minus i phi which is e to the i 
phi conjugate because it's reflected down. That's why we can say that this is equivalent to this. And then we can undo the, um, the base back to n. So we've said that n to the minus s bar is the same as n to the minus s, the whole thing conjugated. Does that make sense? Um, it took me um, uh, just some thinking to get that right. In fact, it's so important, let's draw another picture. So the picture I'm going to draw is to say s equals e to the i phi e to the i phi that's phi and this is s bar is e to the minus i phi what we're interested in is this expression e to the i if we take the complex conjugate of just that power that we raised it to that means well phi is a real number so that means that's inverted e to the minus i phi So what that tells us is that e to the i phi bar is e to the i phi all bar. Because that is e to the minus i phi it's reflected down. That's what we're using here. It might sound obvious to you, but if it doesn't, that's why we've gone through these steps. So what that means is this sum, the, the, the Riemann zeta sum, when we feed it the conjugate of S, that is the complex conjugate of when we take the complex conjugate of the whole term. And that if we write it out, we're saying the Riemann zeta function of S bar is the complex conjugate of the Riemann zeta function at s. If you think that through, what that's saying is that if I feed s bar, that's the same value as feeding it s, but then taking the complex conjugate. That means, let's take it slowly, that means the, the Riemann zeta function has the same magnitude when the points are reflected in the real axis but the phase is inverted. That's what it means. But this is only for sigma more than one. Let's see what it looks like for the other expression for sigma more than zero, just to make sure it's the same. Now, we can break it down again, where we've got this sigma s, this eta s. Remember that looks very similar to the normal series. It's just alternating version of the zeta. So the same logic tells us that when we feed it s bar, it's the same as feeding it s, but then taking the complex conjugate afterwards. And then we can use an identity. One over z bar is one over z all bar. If you're not convinced why that's true, let's draw a picture again. What we said was one over z bar is the same as one over z all bar. If we write z equals r e to the i phi, then we can say z bar equals r e to the minus i phi. One over z is one over r e to the minus i theta. And then one over z bar is one over r e to the i phi. And what we can see here is one over z bar is one over z, but conjugated because the difference is that minus. That's, that's how we, we use these two to get that identity. Again, it's often just presented as an identity in, in textbooks, but it's nice to see where it's come from. That allows us to say that the other factor, this one here, one minus two to the one minus s bar, it's inverted, minus one, is the same as one minus two to the one minus s without the bar, but the whole thing conjugated. That's what this identity is giving us. So if we put the two together using this new expression for 
these Riemann zeta function. We've got 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s bar and the bar there. And then we've used these two facts to tell us that again, the same conclusion that if we feed s bar to the Riemann zeta function, it's the same value as feeding it s, but then taking the conjugate afterwards. This identity here, um, something conjugated times something conjugated, is the same as the product conjugated. Again, you can find you know, the explanations in, in the basic um, uh, textbooks. It's something we should be able to remember from school. If that's a problem, get back and we'll kind of draw a picture to show why that's the case. So we've, we've come to the same, same conclusion, again, that the Riemann zeta function has the same magnitude above and below the real axis, but the phase is inverted. Now, I've been a little bit um, insistent on the domain that these conclusions are valid for. In fact, it is valid across um, the whole complex plane when we extend the Riemann zeta function um, to the left of sigma equals zero. We haven't done that yet, but, but, but that is also true there. And here's just a, a nice visualization just to show the phases. So what I've done is overlaid the uh, kind of the height map with the kind of the height lines. And just to zoom in there, you can see that the phase above and below is inverted. So yellow, blue, so this goes yellow, blue, yellow, and this goes blue, yellow, blue, so it's opposite. And again, around the interesting zeros and pole, the, the colors are inverted for the phase. So that's, that's a nice kind of visualization that we've seen. Great, well, I hope that was useful. Um, nice little video there just to confirm that point. And uh, we'll see you next time, bye.